Okay, now that we've seen the rules for conjunction elimination and conjunction introduction, we can see analogous rules for disjunction. Disjunction introduction allows us to derive from any sentence P a disjunctive sentence P or Q. On disjunction elimination, we use subproofs to follow the pattern of reasoning we used in proofs by cases. Alright, the rules for disjunction are more interesting than the rules for conjunction, or at least one half of them are. The first rule is disjunction introduction. Suppose in the course of a proof, we prove P1. Then, we're entitled to derive from this P1 or Q. And we'll cite our line here, call our line N. So from any standalone assertion, we can derive a disjunction of that assertion in some other sentence. This, again, might seem a little bit weird because it seems like we're throwing information away. But sometimes we might just want to show P or Q from P and we don't want to limit ourselves. And we're going to consider an example in which this is useful for us in just a minute. So that's the rule of disjunction introduction. A more interesting rule is the rule of disjunction elimination. Suppose that we have a disjunctive pair, P or Q, and we want to derive some further sentence S. Well, here's how we do this. We go by cases. So suppose we have, at some point in our proof, P or Q. We set up a temporary assumption in which we assume P is true, and this puts us in our subproof. If, in the course of this, we can show that S holds, and then we assume the other disjunct Q, and in the course of this, we can show that S holds, then we're entitled to derive S from all of this by the rule of disjunction elimination. Now, the important thing is that this whole proof relies on these assumptions here and what we're able to derive from them. And so we're temporarily assuming them is true, but they're only temporary assumptions. And once we close off the subproof, we can't access any of the stuff on the inside of it. We can only rely on the fact that we've shown that if we assume P, then we can derive S. And if we assume Q, then we can derive S. And so P or Q implies S. Here's a humdrum example. Suppose we say if it rains or if it hails, the game will be canceled. Well, assuming it rains, the game will be canceled. Assuming it hails, the game will be canceled. So if we know that it's going to rain or it's going to hail, then we can get down here the claim that the game's going to be canceled. Let's try constructing a proof that makes use of both of these. So suppose we have as a single premise, A or B and C. And down here, our goal is A or C. Well, here's how we set this up. First, we assume that A holds. I'm going to number these lines. On our assumption that A holds, we can straightforwardly derive A or C by disjunction introduction. And we'll cite line two, because from A, by disjunction introduction, we're allowed to go from A to A or C. Then we assume this other side of the disjunction. We assume that B and C holds. In the last video, we saw that from a conjunctive string, we're entitled by conjunction elimination to derive any of the conjuncts. So from this, we can just derive C by conjunction elimination on four. And from C, we're entitled to derive A or C by another application of disjunction introduction. And this whole proof amounts to a great big disjunction elimination, for which we'd cite the lines 1 as our premise, 2 to 3, our subproof, and 4 to 6. So you can see that this is the Fitch version of the proof by cases which we introduced in week 6 in an informal context. And this is just how you do it with Fitch and how you cite your lines and so forth. The important thing is that when you come across a disjunction like this, which is to say a sentence with a disjunctive sign as its main connective up here, and you want to derive some standalone assertion the way we did down here, what you do is you assume each of the disjuncts in turn show in these subproofs that that disjunct leads to what you want. And once you've exhausted the disjuncts, you've proved what you want, which in our case was A or C down here. And that's just how disjunction elimination works in the Fitch system.